So today I'm going to be talking about one of the most famous triangles in the world. And no, I don't mean the Bermuda Triangle, I mean the Exposure Triangle. Stay tuned. Hi there and welcome back to Simon Anderson Photography and today I'm going to be talking about the exposure triangle and basically because I want to go back to basics um, for people who don't understand it if you learn the exposure triangle you can pretty much uh, be prepared for any sort of situation with your camera so the exposure triangle what actually is the exposure triangle this is just uh, three points uh, that you need to remember on the camera to get the correct exposure for the, the scene in front of you. So let's uh, do the three points individually and explain them. So number one, ISO. ISO is how sensitive your sensor is in your camera. Now the lower the number, so roughly could be ISO 50, 100, 200, um, the less light is going to be let onto the sensor but the better quality of picture you're going to have. Now sometimes you need to let more light onto the sensor, so you'd up it to, it could be, depending on your camera, ISO 3200, 6400, 12800, and some cameras even higher. Now the trade-off is, uh, the more light or more sensitive your sensor is, the more degraded your picture is going to be, so it's going to be more grainy. So you need to trade, work the trade-off uh, yourself between what um, sensitivity you're going to go for in combination with the other settings on your camera. Number two, the shutter speed. Now the quicker the shutter speed, the less light is going to be hitting your sensor again. So that could be shutter speeds of 800th of a second, 1000th of a second, 10,000th of a second. Once again, the quicker the shutter speed, the less light is going to hit your sensor. Now the longer your shutter speed, so 13th of a second, 10th of a second, one whole second, five seconds and above, uh, the longer the shutter speed is going to let more light onto the sensor. Step three, that's your aperture. Now the aperture can go anywhere from f1.8 to f16, f18, f22 and above. Um, what's the difference? Uh, f2.8, f1.8 is a wide aperture, so the hole in your lens is going to be wide open, so the bigger the hole, the more light it's going to let in. Now, when you drop down to a smaller aperture, where the hole gets smaller and smaller, that could be, say, f16, f22, it's going to let less light on the sensor. But the other thing about your aperture is it also controls your depth of field. So the wide open f2.8 where the hole is larger, you're going to get a more shallow depth of field, which is normally used in conjunction with things like portraits. Um, now the smaller aperture f16 to f22, etc. The smaller aperture is going to let less light in, but you're going to get more depth of field, which is more used in line with um, landscapes. So now we've talked about the three points of the exposure triangle, let's put these into, into a test and then show you the difference of what each different setting can make to your exposure. So here I am in my back garden, um, got everything set up just to show you some tests on how the exposure triangle works. It's quite simple really, there's just three points on the triangle and three things you need to consider. Just combine all three and you can't go wrong. It's just basic fundamentals of photography. You learn that, you're pretty much set up for any situation. So at the moment I've got um, some roses here. So any decent photographer will buy their wife some roses knowing that they're gonna use them later for their video or photography. So make sure you get that sorted. Um, so that's set up on the table. I've got my Nikon D750 here with a Nikon 85 millimeter uh, lens, all set up, ready to go. It's already focused. I just wanna get into it and show you um, how it works really. So at the moment, I went in, I'm in aperture priority. Um, I just put a ballpark figure in of ISO 400 at F9, mid-range figure, and it's giving me a shutter speed of 13th of a second. So I'm gonna put that in manual now and dial in them figures. And then I'm just gonna take a picture. 
Uh, we'll be putting all these pictures on the screen so you can see them as a go and as you can see it's just a picture of some roses against a brick wall nicely exposed nothing fancy um, just to show you how it works <coughs> so let's say that i want to have the background blurry um, basically i need to change one of the settings which is the aperture so on this lens it goes to f1.8 so i'm going to open up the aperture Do you remember the hole i told you about earlier the smaller the hole the less light into the camera the larger the hole more light into the camera um, so I'm going to open this up to f1.8 and take a picture uh, as you can see it is way over exposed so um, we've changed one of the, the things uh, with the aperture but to balance the exposure we've just got to change one of the other things on that triangle to bring it back into balance uh, at the moment i'm on a tripod so i'm just gonna i don't have to worry about the shutter speed because i'm taking a picture of a static object so what i'm going to do is i'm going to change the, the shutter speed so as it's too bright i want to let less light in so i need a faster shutter speed remember the faster the shutter speed the less light into the camera so let's go this the camera's telling us it needs to be 320th of a second so let's take a picture and as, as you can see, nicely exposed again. Um, flowers in focus and the background nice and blurry. So what about if we want to do it the other way? So we want the background totally in focus. We want to see the bricks, the texture of the bricks behind the flowers. So we need to make the aperture smaller as, as possible to get as much as in depth of field. So I'm going to change the aperture to F16. Let's, let's take it away, let's take it out as far as and it goes up f16 anyway so it goes f16 take a picture not not, not enough light hitting uh, the center of the camera so it's way too dark so what i'm going to do you can do two things here the shutter speed or the iso now because it's on the tripod i'm just going to show you first the shutter speed so i'm going to bring that down and now the camera is telling me it's a fourth of a second there's a shot as you can see nicely exposed picture you can see the bricks and texture of the bricks behind the flowers as well uh, now if you didn't have a tripod uh, and as we know a fourth of a second is too slow to hand hold your camera because um, the, the theory is your shutter speed should be at least uh, what your focal length of your lens is this is an 85 mil so i'm just going to say roughly 80th of a, a second if you need to hand hold it I'm not going to hand hold it but I'm just going to give you the principle so what we need to do is we can change the ISO so we still want f16 uh, the camera saying fourth of a second is what we need for this shot to keep everything in focus um, so we can't change the shutter speed faster because there won't let enough light in so we need to change the ISO so what I'm going to do is I'm going to up the ISO right ISO 8000 going to take a picture way too bright we've let high iso has let so much light in that it's totally blown out so we need to combat that by changing one of the other settings which would be the shutter speed but the high iso allows us to um, increase the shutter speed for hand holding so let's change the shutter speed and it's telling us now there it's one a hundredth of a second one one hundredth of a second which is perfectly fine to hand hold with this lens and I'm going to take a picture and there we go so we could have hand held that shot um, uh, the brick wall is in focus and um, we've got a fast enough shutter speed the only trade-off there is the high ISO and especially on some cameras it's going to be very very grainy but like I said that's just a trade-off sometimes we just have to do that to get the shot that we need so basically that is just some fundamentals uh, of the exposure triangle that you could learn basically if you change any part of the triangle you've got to change the other parts to bring balance back to your picture so i hope that helped you hope that helps you understand some of uh, the fundamentals of uh, exposure and how it works um, once you learn the exposure triangle you're pretty much set up for virtually any situation um, you can go out and see in front of you um, if you like this video please leave a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell for more uploads which will be coming soon and I will be doing uh, an exposure triangle for flash photography so uh, make sure you come back for that 
If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll try and answer them as best as I can. And I'll see you in the next one. See you later.